Time I bought, oh god, dude, this is such a horrible idea. I bought the gallon of Kool Aid that you can buy <laughs> from Casey's Buffet. You can buy a, a gallon? You, I swear to god, you can buy a gallon of Kool Aid. It's is it like super three, sweet? It's oh, it's so fucking sweet. <laughs> and I mixed it, I remember I mixed it with Zvetka and it was disgusting, absolutely disgusting. You mixed it with vodka? Yes, dude. Well, I don't know. I was so young, I was a young cookie, I was only like 19, right, no, 20, right, something like right. that, dude. Yeah, it was bad, horrible idea. But I don't you, remember that night. <laughs> <laughs> All because of Casey's Buffet. Dude, Casey's Buffet, yeah. But uh, I'm not shooting on Casey's because I like Casey's. Welcome to Two Dollar Sick, a pro wrestling podcast. I'm your host Aaron Varna, brought to you by Monster Energy Drink and Charmin. Hell, I think My. Aaron actually took accidentally took a sip of God. his dip bottle. <laughs> that was insane. Hey guys, <laughs> hey. welcome to Two Dollar Steak, a pro wrestling podcast. I'm your host Aaron Varnum. Joining me today, as always, Toe Bear. Hello. And Big Mike. Yes. Cookie is actually on this episode. He will be on in a little bit. We had to uh, record his segment otherwise at a, a different time, and uh, you know we're going to edit that in. But still, his segment was very good. Today on $2 Steak, a pro wrestling podcast, we're going to talk about wrestling. We're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. Guys, we uh, got together last night and we got to watch the Conor McGregor fight. And uh, well, you want to call it that? <laughs> I mean, it was a fight. <laughs> well, it wasn't really a fight. It was one sided. It was more of a beatdown. Uh, guys, I, like UFC's fine and everything. I'm glad uh, we didn't pay the full price for that because that is. No, if if you guys want to chip in, like. A hundredth of a Bitcoin, that would be great to help pay for my subscription. <laughs> You're such a little pirate over there. Um, yeah, so, and, th- and that's the thing, man. Like, UFC, like, you're paying $70 for a pay-per-view. I don't feel like you're always getting your money's worth out of a pay-per-view like that. Well, how unless do you feel? Re- unless you're really into UFC and really into the other fights, no. Well, and that's kind of what I was telling you is, like, it's... It's, sometimes it's nice to see like a quick knockout, but not when it's the main event that you've been waiting up for hours to watch. Right. Particularly when it had a, a dud of a co-main event. It's just kind of, I don't know. Yeah. I, Underwhelming. You're paying 70 or however many dollars you're paying for a pay-per-view. And what you're waiting up for, what time was it? Almost one o'clock? Uh, well, they, yeah, they didn't even start the main event until after midnight. And the main of it lasted all of 33 40, seconds? 40 seconds. 40 seconds total? Under 40 seconds, yeah. Close to it. And that, and that was because the uh, the referee was like trying to let Cowboy like right. pull, pull something. Because I'm, I'm just saying, like, don't call it. Don't call it. There's so much money riding on this. We wanted to go past the first round. Dave Batista was sad that he put all that money on Cowboy. Oh, he was all in on Cowboy. And well, you know, he He's looked like to do another movie. Oh, Cowboy Batista <laughs> over there with his nose ring and his cowboy hat on, sponsored by Energy Drinks, Monster Energy Drinks. Yeah, oh, you, you know, like, and here's the deal: I respect UFC fighters. I think they're great and everything. I, UFC as a whole, I am not going to pay that much money for not, that I used to when we were in college we, especially like when Brock Lesnar was fighting we would do uh, we'd go to like Applebee's <laughs> and just drink like three dollar tall boys did Applebee's <laughs> actually show the pay-per-views oh yeah that sounds like an amazing it place it was a pretty to good go. time the one time I got too drunk though and I spilled an entire um, tall boy all over the table they uh, give you tall boys at Applebee's yeah they know how to party man it's I've Applebee's. never I don't think I've ever been to Applebee's like as an adult so I, I, I don't know, you know what goes on at the bees. You know, just uh, it gets a little crazy, but it all works out. That's why I watched Brock Lesnar knock that one dude out in like a minute, or maybe it was no, maybe it was in like the third. I forget. I was drunk, but I remember the place went wild. It was pretty cool. I think I saw I, I think the last, I, I maybe I saw Alistair Overeem knock out Brock Lesnar, or like he hit him in the diverticulitis and. 
Brock Lesnar like doubled over and it was the end of that fight. I think that was like the last pay per view maybe I saw in in the comfort of somebody else's home or or, or whatever you, you you call that. It's just I would rather watch a wrestling pay per view that is booked to keep your emotions up and down and you know you're going to get your money's worth at the end. Well, it's funny because we were talking and I was telling you, it's like sometimes I wish in wrestling they would do like that quick little knockout. Like like somebody gets a lucky shot in and just like, boom, that's it. And it's like crazily stop the match is over and you weren't anticipating it at that point. Because sometimes, I mean, particularly you're guilty of it is, you know, you're calling the match before it happens and you kind of already know what's going to ha- like what is going to happen. And then all of a sudden they hit a finisher. Right. Like, oh, well, that's the end of the match. Right. And like only, I don't know, but then, you know, Conor McGregor wins in 40 seconds and I'm a little pissed off because. Yeah, because you, you wasted two precious hours of sleep and you've got a child that, oh that's going to wake up regardless at six o'clock in the morning. It was so, I, I haven't stayed up that late in a long time. But we do appreciate it, Mike. Yeah. No I uh, got to come over. <laughs> uh, the whole time I was just thinking about what was going on in Rayford. <laughs> I I I have yet to text Zane Dawson to see how his match well, with the Waffle the brothers, House crew was. Yeah, I hope the the brothers took it to scattered, smothered, covered, whoever they are. Yeah, those those Waffle House fucks. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Wonder like like if your whole gimmick is based around you working at a Waffle House. One, I think your gimmick is only going to work in the Southeast. <laughs> and two. You're aiming kind of low oh, well, with that gimmick. Well, maybe they, it's just what you know. You just, I don't know. Well, there's plenty of, like, if you're going for, like, that blue collar thing, like, there's plenty of, like, aggressive and manly blue collared things, but, like, yeah. Waffle uh, House. Oh, you sling hash at Waffle House? That's great, bro. <laughs> like, that's not I even blue hash, collar. Kick ass. <laughs> you're not a doorman at a, like, popular nightclub or, or anything they like have, that. Like, a rival Huddle House. Yeah. Like, tag team. <laughs> Fuck you! Grew, uh, what, what are the other? There's a Huddle House. There, there's uh, they, there was like fifty of they them have at the one Canadian point. Territory Tim Hortons tag team. A. <laughs> <laughs> hey? Well, we had a good time last night. All right, for our first matchup of the evening, Greenhorn, the man formerly known as Greenhorn Big Mike, and I, he, he showed that he's still a little green behind the uh, the ears last week when he was like that snap, uh, that what is it, the snap suplex? Is snap, that, yeah, is that what it's called? Hey, just because I don't know all the words. Yeah, I honestly, and you'll go on like some of these these websites, and people are like, "Well, he he did the Meltzer Driver 15," and you're like. I, yeah, I, I think you're just making shit up as you go. I, don't, I, I think that's not really what the name of that move is. Anyways, Mike has got Ric Flair and Arn Anderson against the real rock and rollers, the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, this is from a Monday Night Nitro, March 6th, 1996. That's right, baby. Um, so this was probably still past the Rock and Roll Express Prime. Yeah, so <laughs> it, they got together as a team officially, I think, in like early 80s, so like 1983-ish, and uh, you know, they, they had a good run in NWA and AWA, all these like different promotions picked them up because they were one of the hottest tag teams around. This was on the back end of it, but they're still they you know, able to I mean, work. They moved well. Uh, Ric Flair and Arn Anderson come out in football jerseys. That's right. <laughs> and uh, props to Ric Flair repping the Kevin Green. A uh, Hall of Famer repping a Hall of Famer. Game recognizes game. Oh, well, Kevin Green, at this point, was on my team, the Carolina Panthers, and, uh, you know, he was a former linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, and now he's a Hall of Famer. And now he's a Hall of Famer. And I think he might be maybe coaching somewhere. Uh, or... Yeah, he was doing something like that. But So they come out in football jerseys. So the Nitro, this is the first time I've seen it. They have a first hour and a second hour different announcing teams. Um, so it's Tony, Shivani, and then who else? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about it now. It was Tony, Shivani, and maybe... Eric Bischoff? Uh, no. no, Eric Bischoff was the second hour. It, 
It was Tony Schiavone and Larry Zbysko for the first hour. Okay, so Larry Zbysko spends the first bit just trashing football players because I guess there was something <laughs> going on between Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, and then Kevin Green and... And Steve, Mongo McMichael. So basically, I don't know, they were... Tra- he was trashing football players and I joked because, you know, he, at one point he says that, oh, Ric Flair got in a three-point stance. Wrestlers can do f- football, but football players can't do wrestling. And then... Right. Uh, to throw back to a couple episodes ago, you said you were going to find out where all of those guys played college football at the Terry Funks and Dory and whoa, West Texas. So, uh, so West Texas University or college or just a general region? What is what is that? So West Texas, uh, a ton of professional wrestlers came from West Texas, and you've got people like Dusty Rhodes, Tully Blanchard. I, I didn't pull this up. You for, you forgot to tell me the. Uh... I told him last night that I was going to reference this in my segment. <laughs> but he had two beers, Mike. He had two beers. Night. Yeah, he, he had was, two he beers last just... night, and he got a little loose. Who knows what he did? What he got into when he got back here? Oh my god, he's probably stumbling around his house. All right, all right, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Tully Blanchard, Ted DiBiase, Bobby Duncombe Sr., Stan Hansen, Tito Santana. Terry Funk, Dory Funk Jr., and of course, Dusty Rhodes, all coming from West Texas. As in, it's a university, though. One university, they Division played, Two. They played football there. Correct. So, um, obviously, football players can wrestle. That's right. I mean, that's a, there's a lot of championships and things in that, coming from that just one university. Yeah, we were just talking, uh, we while we were previewing next week's uh, match, you had uh, oh Farouk coming out, and uh, Farouk, you know... Being an All American at uh, Florida State, and then uh, MJF a f- big time football player too. Who MJF? No, God, he no. wasn't. Well, MJF, I he think played he played like Divi- D three. Yeah, Division three ball. Got, like, sorry, he's a big football player. Like Aaron was a big football player. That's right. <laughs> um, That's right. That, that means you were good in high school. Ironically enough, this is ninety six, so probably about two years, two three years before their most famous homegrown talent, Goldberg, a uh, football player. That's right. right. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson played at uh, the, the, the old U. Yeah, so football players can obviously wrestle, but he's he's doing it to try to get, I don't know, the the heels, bad guys over. I'm assuming yeah. the, rest, or the football players were the good guys. Anyway, we've been talking about this for a long time. Um, we get into, oh, actually, they're escorted by Miss Elizabeth. And That's right. Woman. woman. <laughs> ah! Nancy yeah. Benoit. Yes. Yeah, but so at this time, screams. I think she was with Kevin Sullivan. Okay, either way, they're escorting Arn and Rick down the ring. Rick, uh, I can see where... Because we, we, we've always joked. I just poke fun at Aaron saying that Ric Flair's not that good of a wrestler. And you're like, yeah, it's everything else he does, though. Yeah, so this it's is, everything else. This is like peak Ric Flair doing that sort doing of stuff. Doing crazy stuff. And I just want to... I don't know if you guys went to high school with any kids that were like bleach blonde, kind of looking like Ric Flair, but I went to... Uh, or not high school, middle school or elementary school, but at least three kids in my class had that exact Ric Flair haircut. I had it, but it was natural. <laughs> I definitely had that same haircut and that same Because it's like not quite a bowl color. cut, but not like, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, we get into the match early on, and it's um, Ric Flair and... Ricky Morton. Ricky Morton, and it's like blonde hair everywhere. Ricky Morton has this perfect Joe Dirt classic little past the shoulders mullet it is not attractive it's not trashy you joke that it's as if you if you had to go to a halloween store and buy a mullet that's the mullet that's that the you're mullet gonna you buy get um but he, he he's i mean he's a good worker i can see it. he's still working now i guess but um back then you know, even in the you know what is it, the end ish of their run of, like, of their he moves years. well and then the other guy what's, what was his name oh one eye robert gibson yeah he's he's quick he's robert fast, gibson's man. very he, quick he moves well sees well apparently with one eye um but the whole time like rick flair's just doing his little like cheesy flair-esque flops and just like being very visual and you could see that they're they're doing different things to kind of get over on the ref at one point our boy randy anderson <laughs> shoves rick flair and flair goes flying he's sell he's sell rick flair is selling for randy anderson he does it three up three more times down the ramp um past this weird catering table yeah and, and at that point in uh rick flair and and kind of rick flair and 
and uh, Arn always had a table with like bubbly and food outside the ring at that point. Yeah, we actually got a reference to bubbly. The bubbly. Uh, the bubbly. Um, and, and I don't know, I'm kind of all over the map here, but when the second hour of Nitro starts, there's big pyro and everything. Yeah, they Arne, just stopped the match. Arn yeah, Anderson's, Anderson's in the middle of the ring. He just like looks pissed. Like, I don't know if he forgot that it was going to go <laughs> yeah. off. Um, the whole match, though, yeah, the... the Arn Anderson and Ric Flair are trying to like get over on the on the Rock and Roll Express, and um, I don't know. At one point, they're like doing the figure four, and he's like Ric Flair's like grabbing him and a double figure four and trying to like help out. I don't know. It was a good match. I love the double figure. It would. Four um, that was nice. At one point, it, again, I, I mentioned this. It, it devolved. Everybody talks about classic tag team wrestling. This is nineteen ninety six. Yeah. It devolved into a spot show, just like anything else does today. I still don't understand the rules of why and when a tag partner can come in and break up. You get five seconds. seconds. You get five. seconds. No, but like the, no, it's like they I get know. tagged in. They're working. They're I getting know. pinned. They come in, break it up. Nobody gets in trouble. And then all of a sudden, we're doing spots. We're doing double. The Rock and Roll Express do exa- the exact same thing the Young Bucks did, where they they do a, like a toss and then they. Both super kick the guy, right? Um, so you know, everybody shits after, on t- uh, tag team wrestling today. Is it spot show? At least in AEW, well, it was the same thing back in '96. I uh, maybe it's TNT. I, it is definitely it's TNT, and and the thing is, like, you'll see a lot of things that are very similar to Nitro that that there is the dynamite. It's it's an yeah, interesting a lot of oats dynamic. WCW and that, or it's, I don't know, I don't know if it's coincidence or. They do it on purpose, but but yeah, I mean, as long as you grab the good things and leave all the bad things. And you know, I think they're doing bash at the beach. They, they did, did it last week. It was yeah, last week. They, I think that uh, they have the same director. Like, I think that what what I was looking up, they have the same directors. One of the directors, and it's not Dan Bynum, the guy that that like I introduced you to at, at Wrestlecade. It's this other guy who was the guy that was producing and directing the shows for nitro he was a cool cool dude to talk to we only got to speak with him briefly but he was super engaging and well he dan bynum started off with wccw with the von erics in texas and then kind of moved his way up and he's currently he did a little bit of mlw and, and stuff like that he's a guy that's very knowledgeable in professional wrestling uh production video production wise and that's what I kind of get off on. It's like, mm, tell me, what, what made you decide <laughs> to pick that camera for, for that spot? Mm. Uh, ult- ultimately, um, you know, the, the match goes on. It, it's a good tag team. Everybody's kind of getting their stuff in. The heels, which are Arn Anderson, Ric Flair, they get the women involved. And they, like, gouge. Yeah, um, they, they, they who's, gouge who's Ricky up? Morton's eyes. Okay, so, yeah, cause because God, uh, God forbid you go after the, the guy with only one eye. Yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't um, have sold and that I think move. He gets rolled up or something like that, and they, they get the the pin and the win. Um, it wasn't a bad match. I liked it. It was fun. It was fun. Um, you know, I, you probably gave it to me because I was talking, you were ta- on talking <laughs> mess on the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, hey. I still don't think they should be wrestling Dude, today. It's like this, Mike. You but, know how like we're on the pitch... And we're old and fat. And we take on the college kids. Yeah, you know, and they can outrun us, but we outposition them. Yeah, you know, we know we all the beat tricks. Their asses. Yeah, that, yeah. that was true. Ninety six, thirty years later, it's, it's a little... the same thing, man. They they paved the way for these boys. They know all the tricks. They know where to be and where. You know, I'm, I'm not even going to gonna act that Keenan cannot like run all over my ass like <laughs> on an old boys match. Badger. He's like a 60 year old man and he still knows like how to cut like see, down the field. About, I'm like, man. I'm just going to yeah. let him do that's this. experience, baby. All right. Well, we agree to disagree on this. The, the one thing I didn't like about the match really was that Arn Anderson just seemed like he got one spine buster in. But they, I feel like he just seemed like an average dude, and it's he Orn is, Anderson. Man. Like he it's should Orn, be, man. He should be beating ass and just taking names. Oh, I he think does that, beat ass. yeah, I think he does in a in a way. In this match, though, it just it just seemed like he was just a, a participant, not Arn Anderson. Well, he's, also he's pissed he's, about that pyro still. He's being <laughs> overshadowed by Ric Flair, who is overselling everything. But I, that looked good, though. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like Arn could have. I don't know. I'm honestly him. surprised that Ric Flair didn't sell for the pyro going off. He like <laughs> he takes a bump in the middle of the ring. Oh, that pyro got me! <laughs> well, he, uh, well, when it goes off, he does run down the ramp. Yeah. <laughs> so I think he actually did maybe like pretend to be scared because yeah, he he hopped off the ring and ran down the ramp. Uh, and that was a good match. I think it's for mostly for the fans. You get Arn and and Flair in the same ring. You know, um, it's two of the four, right? Yeah, and, and like, I was people telling- just go wild. I was telling you guys that I actually remember when this match happened. Like I, I remember 
those guys, uh, the Kevin Green and the Mc- Mongo McMichael storyline happening in real time when I was when I was a child, because eventually they have a match against those guys. Steve Mongo McMichael turns on Kevin Green, and then joins the Four Horsemen, and then Steve Mongo McMichael becomes a full time wrestler and then commentator for WCW. It was awful. Oh, really? Steve Mongo McMichael was awful. Okay. No, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know who that is. So. Wait, well, he was a, a, obviously a, an NFL player. <clears throat> was he a Hall of Famer? N- no, okay. not at all. Mike, time for your uh, social media update. Uh, do we have a... Uh, oh, no, no. The... Uh, the advertisers, um, they knew that they this pulled week's, out. Yeah, this <laughs> week's episode out. was going to be spliced and diced, so they didn't, they didn't want to unsponsor anything. So. so Monster Energy Drink was... Well, they, they, they still are a collective sponsor, them and Charmin, because they still have not denounced us. Right. Um, and, you know, I, if, if we can get one, I'd be happy, but if we can get three denouncings... From one of these companies, that <laughs> I would get a chuckle out of it. So, Monster Energy Drink does that deal still go on two for five dollars? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, some select bodegas is two for four fifty. So, Ooh, watch out! You got to drop this. Did you do your market steak. research this week? Uh, I did. Yeah, yeah. But make sure you follow us at number two dollar steak underscore because I know we've got some new listeners. That's right. Um, on social media at Twitter and Instagram, uh, but then when you buy your your two monsters for four fifty, make sure you tell the cashier two dollar steak sent you. <laughs> And, and, may- <laughs> and they won't care. <laughs> the cashier will be like, like uh, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> no, no, no. The, that's the deal for Rockstar Energy Drink. <laughs> Rockstar's two for three. We're a higher class than what, that. Now, what is the, the hierarchy of... Can you give me a quick hierarchy of energy drinks? Uh, well, I mean, you can, so you go to Aldi's and get their Gridlock, uh, <laughs> which is an energy drink for a dollar. Uh, Gridlock. You can get two rock stars for three dollars. Okay. Um, two monsters for four fifty. Bangs are around three apiece. Those are like three hundred milligrams. Rockstar came out with some three hundred milligram ones that are that are still falling that two. Wait, three hundred milligrams of caffeine? Yeah. Uh, but rock stars still fall in that two for three most places. Now there's this one called Rain. These are, these are all sixteen. Ounces. What is Rain? I don't know, man. I've seen and rain. You get, the, you get the bougie Red Bulls. If you buy, if you're drinking Red Bull, you're just doing it for get the, the, fuck the out show. Of here. Yeah, you're watching you're Liverpool not, play. Yeah, you're, you're not doing it for the quality. I don't, I don't do the energy drink thing. I just pound coffee. And yeah, I've had my coffee this morning. Lovers. I don't know if you guys can tell. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't grab the mallet in time. But yeah, I'll, uh, oh god. It's so loud. It's too early for. Um, well, speaking of the of the bell, um, because we have not had an unfollow so i don't know if again these people are just care enough to that they want to watch our content on social media or on twitter but mm-hmm. we haven't had an unfollow recently now aaron did follow somebody yesterday so i'm curious if he follows back or not if he does not follow back he will get the shit list next week okay um but yeah so nobody no twitter followers have made the shit list again we we've continued to grow our our presence without pissing anybody off so i don't know with, with our new listeners if we need to have another um you know, LGBT episode to lose some lose followers. Because my spot, my shit list, my gimmick is just kind of dying because I ain't got anybody to shit on lately. Well, I mean, you shit on... I think that it's evolved. This segment has evolved it's from... Terms, Mike yells at clouds. Yeah, but we like it, though, because okay. you're an angry man sometimes. I, yeah, I, can, I can get angry. And, and I was going to shit on the UFC fight, but we already talked about that, so... Uh, I can't really shit on that now. So we had some good content this week. I think. Uh, well, actually, you know what? I'm I'm gonna start. Occasionally, we get these good one-liners during the episode that have no. If you don't know what we're talking about, it's actually really funny. Um, and so you had the Cheryl get the ear candle. My tinnitus is acting up again, or whatever. It was. Oh, Cheryl, my tinnitus is back up. Get the ear candle, whatever the fuck it was. I tweeted that out. Um, Got some good like movement on that, like three hundred some impressions, <laughs> right. a couple engagements. I think we get a retweet from Zane. You you had that great um you had that great umbrella one with, with Kyrie, <laughs> Kyrie coming, Zane. coming from behind Jerry Lawler. <laughs> that that got like five hundred, not like thirty four impressions or uh, engagements. Several, I forget engagements, impressions now. I don't, right. I don't follow anymore. But a couple hundred with like thirty some. Our engagement rate's like one percent. That's pretty solid, honestly. Yeah. Um, how, how's our engagement rate on Instagram? Uh, better than it was two weeks ago. We had one ding dong post the yeah. entire week. No, I think Tolbert had a couple more than that, right? Tolbert, what'd you post this week? I don't know. 
You just posted the day. <laughs> yeah. Now it, now he's like, uh, no, no, you're you're correct. It was one singular ding dong post, but it was a comprehensive um, everything. Uh, happy Friday. Have a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Royal Rumble's coming up. Tolbert's just, he's all about condensing everything into one. <laughs> Hey man, you don't post. need to see a bunch of posts every time. I'm about quality here, you know. So not not quantity. <laughs> and so I run the Facebook page. I had a couple good posts this week. I found that picture of the Ultimo Dragon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and a, a guy, <laughs> a guy that, that looks great. like a mini uh, a mini Wookie. Mini Wookie with a thumb nose. <laughs> yeah, it, you know. And I said it's the weekend. Get weird. So uh, like that. Yeah. I think that one had some engagement. But I, uh, I I had recently done a new promotion for our Facebook page to try to get in new listeners and stuff like that. And uh, damn, dude, we've had like 60 new likes in the last like two days alone. Likes on Facebook literally mean nothing. Yeah, but the more, e- like, the more eyes on our product, the more brand awareness brings in you know it's like a tri- it's, it's trickle down economics <laughs> which has been proven not to work but um, <laughs> but anyway yeah so trickle our likes so please follow us on facebook trickle which all is over us two dollar steak spelled out correct yeah it's it's the the number sign well no no the dollar sign and then the number two just look uh, yeah google google two dollar steak a pro wrestling podcast on facebook go uh follow us on twitter and instagram at number two dollar steak underscore for some good funny witty twitter um comments and then and then you an know, occasional instagram post you'll see me stumble throughout my day and come upon something wrestling related god bless my girlfriend for liking and supporting oh my each gosh. one of you between uh, her and zane are battling to be our most our top badge our, our top like like her I God, thank God for those two. If yep. not, we would not have any social media presence. Yeah, because all four of us follow the two dollar steak Twitter, and none of us like any of our posts. Yeah, but like I never go on Twitter. <laughs> I go on Twitter like every three. I'm days. only on Twitter on the actual like podcast account, and that's so. how I am too. Like I'll get a notification, and I'll and I'm not like micromanaging, but I'll like go in and like like read something and sometimes I'll do a quip or whatever. So Aaron, I will give Aaron credit not to keep dragging this, this segment on, but Aaron has the highs and the lows and I'm kind of like a middle poster where like I, I hashtag the right things and I do it at the right time and I get decent stuff. Aaron will either like knock it out of the park or strike the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) I've done both. Like we have, we have 250 uh, Twitter followers and one of his posts had 77 impressions. Which one was it? Oh, I don't even know. It was like a reply. Oh, it was your, your Kevin Owens reply with the Sonic the Hedgehog thing. Oh, but that one I thought was funny because he looked like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I got 4,000 yesterday just given the, the questioning eyes oh, okay, on a well. Nate, um, Dolph Ziggler post. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Do you have a shit list this week? No, I know. I mean, we talked about the UFC. Um, uh, okay. I wasn't going to do it, but I'll do it. All okay. right, so shit, on the shit list this week are the three gentlemen sitting in this room. Okay. Aaron, Tolbert, and myself. But no cookie. No cookie, because one cookie, it's MLK weekend. He wants to go spend the extra day with his um, girlfriend, and he asked us to accommodate his schedule. This is the first time Cookie's ever asked us to accommodate his schedule. Right. Now, now he, for the most part, accommodates ours. He's usually a little late, but um, when we have to go early and all that. So he asked, I said, yes, we'll accommodate you. What do you need? You want to record on Thursday? Perfect. We can do that. And then it turned into what sounded like to me that they were going to record cookie segment on Thursday. No, no, no. You volunteered and said, yeah, we'll accommodate your schedule. We'll be there on Thursday. You said we. I said we on Sunday, but then on Thursday, Tuesday at practice, Aaron made it sound like it was just him and Cookie. Which I'm at practice again. And then uh, then we're like, well, because Tolbert only gets to practice once a week. So, you know, we won't make Tolbert record on Thursday. And then at 530, when you guys are supposed to meet at six, I made a post to the wrestling chat that said, they're going to record their segment at 6. Aaron read it at 5.30. He could have corrected me. I didn't hear anything. I went to practice. Tolbert's not there. So then I'm like, oh, shit. Was I supposed to record? Yeah. Call you. you. Tolbert wasn't here either. Right. So it was just me and uh, Cookie for an awkward segment. (laughs) Cookie and I, I gave him a shitty match because you told me to give him a shitty match. (laughs) <laughs> and I can't wait to hear it. And it's just me and Cookie just trying to make conversation for 20 minutes. All right. Well, anyway, so Aaron, Tolbert, and myself, for probably the third time now, make the shit list. Oh, I was working on home improvements, Doesn't man. matter. I you was painting my living room. You were MIA in any of the conversation. We just assumed that Tolbert would yeah, be somewhere. Dude, I was, was nowhere. doing trim work and fucking you know, I hate painting. 
Living room looks good, though. I'm glad. Right. $2 steak sans cookie makes Big Mike's shitless. Shit For the strong style cookie, uh, last week, you know, I, I, I've been giving you matches that I think that that are that are five five cookies all around. Absolutely, five cookies Great matches and phenomenal worked matches with holds, moves, and everything. Listen closely, to everything he's saying right now. And uh, this week, I decided to give you, you know, change it up a little bit. I gave you um, Tiger Jeet Singh. And Ricky Choshu from 1985. Cookie. Oh, wait. Sorry, Cookie. <laughs> ah! I love that thing. I want you to look at me. Okay. <laughs> while I read this uh-huh. and notice that you remember the anger that you had watching December to this member? Yes. That was the anger I had watching this match. It wasn't that bad, was it? It, it wasn't that bad. Are you kidding me? You know what you did. Okay. You gave me the equivalent of the monster truck match yes. between Hulk Hogan yeah, I did. and uh, the Giant. Yeah. Absolute shit. Tell the people what you did. Tell uh, the uh, tell the people what you did. Well, this match is very... Um, I don't think there's any moves in the match. No, I, I, I think I counted. I think I think there's three to four moves. Three to four. Uh, there's blood. There is a, there's a lot of blood. Okay, let me paint a picture for you people. If Aaron last week gave me a metaphorical golden egg with the match of Ibushi versus Nakamura, two of the rising stars in NJPW of that time, he literally shat in his hand and smacked me in the face with the excrement. That's that sounds correct. That yes. this match was absolute shit. Okay, it, it was it was Choshu right? Choshu, yeah, Ricky Choshu, yep. Versus Tiger Jeet. Sing. Yep. Uh, he is the father of Tiger Ali Singh. If anyone at home remembers Tiger Ali Singh, barely remember him from the Attitude Era. I always confused him with Marvelous Mark Mero. Yeah, well, I don't know why I think they they're kind of similar. Kind of similar. But listen, when Mike said, when Mike said, give Cookie some shitty matches, he didn't mean give me Hulk Hogan versus the Giant Monster Truck Match. Okay. I, I, I am. I need to give my people. Five cookie matches, and I need to give him good reviews. What is Zane Dawson gonna do now that he's listening to me bitch and moan about this shitty match? Well, I mean, like he he'll probably watch this match. He and, and I mean, and it's, he's it's, gonna it's, understand where I'm coming from. But it's not. I, I when, <laughs> when I'm looking back, I watched it like right before you came over here, and the match. I mean, it was boring. One, <laughs> I, I I don't know how how I picked something so boring. But the first like minute, it's like, oh, okay. Let me let me tell you, okay, guys, guys. The first thirty seconds of this match, there's streamers. I'm gonna paint a picture for you. It's the '90s. There are streamers everywhere, and all I see is a tall, big man fighting another big man. But he's not using his fist. Oh no, he is using an, a a trophy. It looks like a trophy, a staff, no, no, some no, sharp no. object. What is so, that? So the first off. Ricky Choshu's beating him with a bouquet of flowers. Is that what it is? Uh, and okay. then, and then, <laughs> so Tiger Jeet Singh is known for his sword. Not a, not a Zelda sword, have you? <laughs> but this is a uh, just a sword that he he brings out to ringside. Okay, so it's well, a sword. So I so I couldn't even. So with the streamers, you can't even tell that Choshu is beating him with a bouquet of flowers. So my bad, my bad to it's, miss. It's that, okay that that part of the match, that, that instrumental part of the match, but. What I noticed firsthand is, okay, I guess Tiger beating him over the head with a sword, the end of a sword, I right, guess. Right, right. The hilt, maybe? Is that what it's called? A hilt? I don't know. Someone looked that up. Someone Googled that at home. But anyway, get back to us. Tweet, tweet us at steak underscore. Anyway, back to my rant. So, what I want to know is, Choshu starts bleeding about a minute into the match. Right. Why is he, is he, is he bleeding? Because he just gets bashed yeah, yeah, over yeah, the yeah. head with that, that sword so I'm thinking the like, hilt the like he takes that hilt and he just like digs it into his head grinding it yeah, into yeah, his yeah. head alright now explain to me for the next three minutes they are just holding on to each other's hair or they're grabbing I, each other's I, hair I, or? I, yeah they're I, I, so Tiger I think tries to bite him 
I, a few I, times. I, I, I did notice a couple of bitings. And then they just kind of like roll around. They, they're, roll, they, they're rolling around and they're they're grabbing each other's hair. And it, I, I assume they're playing it off like digging into each other's eyes. What I want to know is what the commentators are saying. How are they hyping this up for the fans listening at home? Uh, maybe this was, and, and, and I, after I picked it and after I watched it, Maybe this was like a culmination of like a, some sort of feud or something. And, you know, sometimes it's a little tough with uh, Japanese wrestling to know exactly what the storyline is in the match because we don't understand their commentary. Not, no, we do not. We need Kenny we Omega. We it. need Kenny Omega on the podcast right. to translate and, for us. And I'm watching this <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, this is. Not as, as and, exciting as I thought. Giant Baba did not put together a good match for no, me. Oh, this is AG, AJ. So this is AJ PW. Oh, he, well, you he, can hear actually Giant Baba on the commentary. This is this is this is Tolbert's concubine. Like I have no clue what the fuck is going on. Yeah, I didn't at, at one point, I believe uh, Tiger gets Choshu like gets him like straddling the the ring post. Puts his, brings his legs in between the ring posts, and then he starts just throwing his leg into the ring post, right, maybe right. two or three times. Right, rip, whipping that leg. Whipping that leg. And then I think he tries to bite it. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. And then they get back into the ring after that, and I Choshu starts just throwing haymakers. Okay. And I'm talking, leaning into it, right haymaker, right haymaker. He slapped the shit out of his chest, and he fell through with it. And then they started hugging again. Yeah. Hugging again, fall to the mat. They're rolling around, grabbing each other's hair, digging fingers into eyes. Tiger Ali uh, uses a camera as a weapon at one point. He Not, does. Uh, oh, it was kind of cool. Yeah, he yeah, does. Yeah. He does use a camera at one point. Uh, and, and then they get over to the, the commentary table and they jump onto the commentary table. And I think this is when the ref decided to call the match. I believe when they when they <laughs> yeah. got on top of the commentary table, and he was choking him with an XLR cord, he which, was, which he as was. an audio visual person, <laughs> I was very disappointed in uh, the, Ricky Choshu's choice of what to choke him with. Not because, the cord, not the cord. If if you uh, are hanging around my house after the podcast for thirty minutes, I'm coiling cord trying yes. to make it 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 nice and and neat. So we can use it again. Yes. We need the cords. These are not wireless mics. These are not. We're we, listen. The check has not come through from Charmin and Monster Energy yet. I so don't know. I, I hope to God that people listening have gone out and gotten that two for five dollar. Was it five dollars? Energy do? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> let, let's hope that that our Monster Energy drink sponsor watches this match and thinks that it is just as exciting as we do and let make sure that you tell them two dollar steak sent you two dollar okay? steak sent you and once say, again two d-o-l-l-a-r-s-t-e-a-k underscore underscore okay. don't and forget you to just underscore. follow us online uh, anyway going back to my rant the the ref decides to call the match at this point and i'm all i'm hearing is ring a ding 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 you mean you mean like this Except the ref, after about two minutes of calling the match and just ringing that bell, he obviously gets tired. Yeah, he, hey, I, he, I would be too. There's another two minutes of just silence. And mind you that the young lions have come in. So that's how I knew like maybe some kayfabe is being broken here. And some real stuff is happening. Lions are trying to get Tiger off of Choshu. I don't know how they get back into the ring, ladies and gentlemen, but they get back into the ring. They just kind of fall back. They, they, the they, <laughs> but Ricky, Ricky does a, a, a sharpshooter. A sharpshooter. Can I can I let you know something? Let me hear it. He developed that move. No, he did not. Ricky Choshu was the man that came up with the sharpshooter. I'll be damned. Listen, let's start my top four. Cookies, top four. Number one. No. <laughs> Number one, the hilt, the hilt of the sword, the hilt, the hilt gets number one for me. Okay, digging that that the, the hilt, digging the hilt <laughs> into the. Uh, you're the sword expert. You I, should know what what this what it's called. Digging it into uh, Choshu's head, we get some blood, we get some color, and uh, we know how much you are fascinated and how much you love color. Sometimes. But, Sometimes, Sometimes. There tasteful is, color. There, there is so there's such thing as too much color. 
We didn't get that. Thank God we did not get that. But I'm sure we were getting close. Just the right amount. Number two. The sharpshooter. The sharpshooter. I, I, we get one good wrestling move. We get the sharpshooter. Right. Come on now. I, but only one. Only one. Only one. That's that's my gripe with this. Only one. God damn it, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Aaron. Uh, who am I? Uh, you're Ryan right now. Uh, apparently. Uh, apparently, that's I'm okay how with pissed that. I am. God damn it. Number three. The timekeeper. Uh, the the timekeeper. Time the timekeeper is keeping this match together. Not really. No, no he's he doesn't. not at all. Not there at is all. no, nothing is kept together in this match. Not at all. Not at all. And at, at the very end of this, by the way, uh, Tiger doesn't tap. I want to let everyone know that he does not tap, but the ring bell does ring. So, did Tiger screw Tiger? I don't know. Uh, the world may never. Know. Did the great Baba say that after? <laughs> I don't. I'm like watching like highlights of this match afterwards. Joshi was bleeding like a stuck pig. He was, yes, he was. He was bleeding a lot, actually. Holy <laughs> maybe, cow. Maybe it was not tasteful. <laughs> All right. Number four. God, I don't have a number four, to be honest with you. So it's a top three. It's, it's a top three, to honorable be honest Honorable mentions. With you. Uh, uh, I have no honorable mentions. Uh, maybe the streamers. Uh, it, let's see. Uh, the, the fists that were thrown. Um, wait, wait. You didn't like the uh, leg whip? Jeet Singh uh, doing the, the Terry Funk of throwing the uh, the chairs afterwards? Oh, the chairs. Oh, wait. I have a number four. Okay. Number four. The chair at the end. I almost forgot about that part. All right. So at the very end, he goes full Terry Funk mode and just starts throwing chairs at Choshu, who is inside of the <laughs> ring. So mind you, he's in fourth row. He's about four or five rows back in the crowd, and he's chucking chairs, and they're hitting their target, or at least they're, they're close to hitting their target. So my man, uh, uh, Tiger, loves some Terry Funk. He has to. I, I, no matter what match we're watching no matter who the competitors are you throw a chair i'm gonna pop i'm, I'm gonna say right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna laugh a little bit and be like all right guys all right, I, gar good. I guarantee you aaron saw this match on youtube somewhere deep deep in the the anals of of youtube Dude. somewhere <laughs> i literally was at like google page like 15 and i'm like uh and i click it and I see the beginning, and I'm like, oh, shit, somebody is getting hit with a bouquet of flowers. And I'm like, no, nah, that'll be fine. And then how about this? He probably fast-forwarded about six minutes in. I did. And, so, <laughs> and sees the ref trying to break him up. He's like, oh, oh this, oh, this is going to be good. This is getting good. Uh, he fast-forwards about to nine minutes, sees a chair flying to the ring, and he and, has And that was it. He, that was it. That was exactly. I promise you, that was exactly what I did. I guarantee you, he orgasmed right there at that point when he threw that chair inside I, of Those me. are the three spots that, <laughs> that Aaron needs. You hit somebody with a bouquet of flowers. Yep. You hit somebody with a throwing chair, and that's it. I'm good. I'm good. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the, the word of the day is healed. Hilt. Hilt. Sorry. Hilt. 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 I apologize. Hilt. Hilt. I have no honorable mentions. Why not? What am I gonna? What's the what's the honorable mention? Oh, yeah, here? I, I, I mean, I, uh, okay, sorry. The, the end of this match, he puts him in the sharpshooter. They break him up again. Uh, they get separated. Tiger starts throwing chairs into the ring, and that's about it, guys. Yeah, it, and, it, and it was that was. Choshu funny. raises his hand like he won, and I think the crowd was cheering for him at that point. Maybe. Do, do you know what I? I'm I'm excited that I got to use the bell a lot during your your segment. Were you worried that you were not going to use the oh, bell? Oh, I knew I was going to. And the more I think about it, uh, this bell alone puts yeah. me ahead of 75% of those indie promotions outside uh, in, in North Carolina and, yeah. and through various places. <laughs> Half of those motherfuckers don't even have a bell. Exactly. They're just taking... Zane Dawson can attest to that. They're just knocking on wood or something. We we were at an event and somebody had a... Uh, <laughs> they didn't have a bell. A they had the sound bite of a bell. <laughs> And they'd be like, uh, time to play the sound bite of the bell. What happens well, if the <laughs> computer falls asleep? Well, <laughs> you just hear someone, bell, ding, 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 Sorry, ding, I got to put my credentials in real quick. I got I to gotta enter my credentials. Give me a second. <laughs> guys, guys, I love this match so much against five cookies.
Oh, I'm wait just kidding. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, kidding. Yeah, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. I was looking at the, the match from last week. I apologize. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Uh, this this one gets a goddamn goose egg. It uh, gets nothing. You get gets, zero cookies for this? Z- z- what would you give it, Aaron? I would at least give it one because there was no botches. That's, that is true. Wait a minute. I didn't think about that. There was some color. There was color. No botches. I learned a new word. Hilt. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This one gets half a cookie, guys. Half a half cookie. Half a cookie. I, you got it. You got to give a match at least something. You got to give it at least something. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm the timekeeper right now. <laughs> now you guys understand what I was basically watching. I got. I got six minutes of just holding hair, grabbing hair. I felt like I was in a high school bathroom watching two people fight. Yeah, I think I about, think about that. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, think about that for a second. Yeah. Just a lot of grabbing hair and, and and a lot of cussing. Hey, at least we got Mike to watch a uh, Rock and Roll Express match, huh? That is pretty cool. Yeah, How about I, that? I, I, I'm. I, the, we're breaking kayfabe right here. We are recording this early. Yes, you and I are recording this early. That's why Mike and uh, Tolbert are not here. And uh, we are recording this early because, you, you know, you've, you've got obligations got, this weekend. I've got an obligation this week, and unfortunately, I won't be able to record. And we thought it. Mike was going to be here with us, but Mike decided to shit the bed yes. and uh, not show up. Because do you remember he when, when we were cleaning up last Sunday? Yes. Mike was like, yeah, 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 Cookie, we'll, we'll definitely accommodate yeah. you. I'll be here on Thursday with you. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Cookie's going to have a shit list. I, it's I would time for cookie shitless. And cookies guess shitless. And guess who's number one on it? Oh, Big Mike. Big Fat Mike. That's who's going to be on my goddamn shitless. You said that you were going to be here right beside me. I was hoping I was going to get maybe a, maybe you were going to give the crowd uh, an idea of what your uh, unsponsored advertisement was going to be or something like that. Maybe you could have kept me company. You left me with Aaron who gave me a shitty match. That's right. And, and, and where you at, Mike? Huh? Where you at? So you know what? You're going to make cookies shit list. Mike, you've just made cookies shit Shit list. list. Goddamn right you did. For our final segment of the evening, we've got Mr. Number One George South and Cougar J against the Ding Dongs. Oh yeah, this is gonna be brief. Uh, so <laughs> well, I mean, we it's are like, what, in a, a seven minute match, like a six, six minute match, and we are in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, my hometown. Uh, I meant to look up the year, but this is NWA, so... I think 89. Yeah, late 80s. Was it NWA? Yeah. It was right before WCW. You know what? It might have been... Yeah, I don't know. I think m- maybe it Turner just bought it. I'm pretty out. sure it was WCW because I did some research on it. I think that I saw it. I thought I saw an NWA banner in the background. I think this was the transition period Okay, for that. Well, anyway, we're in Fayetteville. We're on the Army base. Uh, I forget the name of the arena, but it is packed out. And How many arenas do they have on Fort Bragg? I'm not sure. I, th- I think they had, at that time, just one big like general use like arena. It's been a nice stadium. Deal. Like a yeah, it looks stadium. good, man. But uh, they've got American flags everywhere. Uh, I mean, it is an Army base. Uh, it's actually Flag Day. I think that's why. And it's the birthday of the Army. Uh, they make a comment about that. We've got JR, young JR on commentary. Yeah. Um, very young. He sounds... <laughs> Sounds like a clear like a teenager, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we we get started pretty quick. Uh, you have George South in the ring, looking like a million bucks, man. That is a great head of hair with his headband and his jackets. His jacket game is strong. And now I I wish that you would have seen like a real tree. Like so, the match that we saw with George South mm-hmm. live was him against the Great Muda. Muda yeah. And you're not going to be able to get the, the traditional George South match nowadays with him because nowadays he gets heat for the first probably 10 minutes of a match and then everyone working <laughs> working trying to take his jacket off. Like it's it's the best thing in the world. Like he knows how to like 
take a jacket off or not take a jacket off. Yeah. Is this before so, the match or during this the match? This is before. Well, like, well, the bell is wrong. So it's kind of like Naito. Yeah. <laughs> with his right. 16 piece Oh, completely. Touch. Completely. But yeah, when we saw him at WrestleCade, woo, yeah, that was great. He gets heat by calling everybody fat. <laughs> yeah, you ain't got a job. <laughs> anyway, so he looks like a million bucks. And we have his partner, Cougar J. I know nothing. Yeah, never Zero about Cougar J. Love the name, though. Cougar J, what a name. Hails from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I know. That that made me <laughs> laugh more than anything. Uh, you do, got do old you George from South like, Carolina yeah, as well. Do you think it's one of George's just bar buddies? No, George <laughs> is not a drinker. A oh, okay. Well, he's uh, from North Carolina, I just assumed they get was. uh they get some mixed uh some boos and applause there. Guys, I, I would like for you to know something real quick. Cougar J now, what he does, um uh, be careful. Uh, he is now a somebody that helps out with the uh Dion Moore uh Saint Augustine ghost tours. <laughs> oh nice. So he he is a uh, in Saint Augustine. down in Florida. Go on a ghost tour. Is that where St. Augustine is? Yeah. I've actually been on the ghost tour. I don't think... I think I would have recognized... I would have been like looked at a guy and been like... You Cougar J? Are you Cougar J? <laughs> what, what, where, where are his match stats? How many... What's on there? Oh, I don't know. He... Um, so, let's see. I was released to the minor leagues of East... Until are you on his Wikipedia page or what? Yeah, WCW took me in... Did he write his own Wikipedia page? <laughs> yeah, when I was introduced <laughs> in to the, the world... First person? On the danger zone as an up-and-coming wrestler superstar, only to be let down in 1988. Uh, he wrestled as Banjo, Bucky Bass, <laughs> Backstreet, Sunny Stone, and Primetime. There you go. Well... He really wrote his own Wikipedia page in the first person. Do you know what he he actually tag teamed with a young R Truth when R Truth really? was first starting out? Good for him. That was right before he got he gave up wrestling in 1999 and moved to LA. And uh, there we go. I, think was like, I saw an Instagram post. It was R Truth's birthday yesterday or something yeah. like that. Well, How so old is he I did, I, I had a, uh, that, did I tell you about the R Truth reference I made on my Twitter yesterday uh -huh. that did really well? I said we're just sitting here watching the UFC prelims, waiting for the. 24 7 365 7 11 <laughs> european television champion <laughs> to run through i don't know it's stupid but it's funny oh uh, anyway so uh we're where were we? we're in uh fort bragg north carolina cougar j fable george south about to take on who are they about to take on we don't know uh we hear some bells man <laughs> ding, we hear ding, some ding. weird ass music yeah yeah and then out come these two Ding dongs, man, and that's what they're called. <laughs> uh, they're the ding dongs. Uh, no one can really tell which one is ding and which one is dong. Which Even one is JR. dong? Oh, it's hilarious. Even Jr. makes some yeah, great comments about like, oh, which we'll, is which. We'll just call that one ding. <laughs> they hail from Belleville, <laughs> USA, which isn't Belleville a city here? In there, North there's Belleville's probably Belleville in every state. Anyway, uh, they are head to toe orange jumpsuits and what looks like some kind of knockoff orange Captain America type mask. It's I interesting. Know. I don't know. Yeah, it's an uh, interesting get up. They have bells around their ankles, in their wrists, and they have one in the corner. You see some like green guy <laughs> like put like ta duct taping it to uh, the corner. They have this little <laughs> bell that they start to ring the whole time, and I guess they mic'd it weird. <laughs> it it like, didn't so sound great. Oh. It's it's so annoying to watch when they're it's ringing like a the broken bell. Uh, Salvation Army <laughs> bell. Anyway, uh, match gets underway. I'm thinking George and Cougar are just gonna destroy these goofy guys, man. But once they start wrestling, like wait a second, these guys aren't no joke, man. They uh they've got some flow. They know what they're doing, and they go right in on Cougar and George. Um, short match, you see. A lot of just quick chain wrestling, a lot of locks, a lot of hip tosses, hip locks, suplexes, and things like that. Um, and you start to realize it's not going so well for old George and Cougar, man. Uh, they're getting whooped up on. And the, the bell's distracting. All their movements are kind of goofy, but effective. Um, and they get the <laughs> upper hand. <laughs> they get the upper hand on old George with a suplex and then a double move off the top rope. Uh, we get an elbow drop off the, the second rope and then a big knee drop to finish the match uh, from Ding or Dong. I don't know which. Um, yeah, I don't think but, anybody knows. <laughs> but just classic. I think it's going to be a squash, but the other way around. But uh, yeah, there's a reverse squash. So the Ding Dongs <laughs> reverse squash. started off as the Rock and Roll Rebels. Okay. So maybe a, a throwback to the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, so... 
Jim Hurd, the guy who kind of take took over as like one of the executives for the WCW brand, thought that that this was going to get the kids into <laughs> watching it. He he decided to create this team geared towards children, and uh, it, it, call them the Ding Dongs. So. The, the, the two guys that did it, it was on June 14th, 1989 at Clash of the Champions 7. And uh, they were expecting like this big reaction. The fans just shat all over it. And Jim Ross, noticeably uh, em- embarrassed, the Ding Dongs defeated the enhancement team of Cougar J and George Staff, leaving the ring scattered with small bells. Yeah, and they were Jim everywhere. Ross <laughs> they were everywhere. <laughs> relieved that the match was over. That Thank you, Wikipedia. To yeah. be fair... Um, one of the most over wrestlers right now hails from Mongrovia and is named question mark. Yeah, but does he have a bell? No, but I'm just saying like you would not have expected him to get over. I don't I, know. This is this is different. This is I, this is way too gimmicky. Question mark is too much of a badass and <laughs> <laughs> And also, you know, it just it plays on like the really old school mask guys. This is yeah. just some goofy shit they threw together. I could just see like there's a chance, but <laughs> oh maybe now with like a, a taste of irony like involved, like I think that it could probably get over like on NWA power. <laughs> But I, I, it is not going to get over on... Well, you uh, guys started talking about ding-dongs and all this sort of stuff in the <laughs> wrestling chat. I hadn't watched Tolbert's match yet. And then you're like, I'm so happy you watched your match. And I'm like, oh, I guess I got to watch this and see what the fuck they're talking about. And then you watched it. Uh, Want to hear a sad Dude. story about ding-dongs? One time we bought a box of ding-dongs. Okay, like the hostess ding-dongs. Yeah, uh, they were not cream-filled. They they like somehow fucked up and didn't... Those bastards! <laughs> Those fucking ding-dongs. There's like chocolate cakes. We got we got yeah. free boxes from Hostess when we called and complained. What time, what time is it, by the way, boys? It's almost eleven. It's almost eleven. All right, let's wrap this up, boys. We gotta go watch uh, Liverpool United. Can I say it's 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 nice and it's not nice to do it in the morning. I'm not quite as like energetic as I usually am, but it's nice to get it done and done have like a full day ahead of yeah, us. Yeah, because you know it's everybody knows is... we don't really care about this. We don't. And Cookie <laughs> always, a, you know, we, we, with Cookie, we always have to do it at like six or seven because he's driving back from, from Charlotte on Shot the weekends. Down. So it, it's a little nice. My to wife get it is done. very happy to have me for the rest of the evening. Uh, yeah. I, I do like it in the mornings. Back when we used to do it in the mornings, but we would do it on a Saturday morning. We just get drunk. That's right. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. you've, you've got a full. We've become professionals now. I Well, also, was that when. No, we only had like a couple episodes when we were on that one mic. So, like. Yeah, no, this was just us not actually caring at all. And where, That's right. where we found that if we actually record on Sundays, usually Sunday evenings, we can't get inebriated and we actually sound better, we're, we're funnier, and we have better numbers. And then we could go ahead and watch the pay-per-view Pay-per-views. or whatever, yeah. yeah. But you know what uh, What I do care about? The haiku? Haikus. I care about haikus. Tolbert's haiku. Yeah, man, this one's about some ding-dongs, man. And <laughs> ding-dongs? That's just, good. It's only two you're syllables. Just, you're having a good time. You're having a good whatever. And then a few ding-dongs show up and ruin it for everybody, <laughs> man. It's a uh, tale old as time. Tale is old as time. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Southern boys, race hail. Who are these orange bastards? <laughs> Ding dong, spoil the fun. Oh, because they do, man. You're just having a good time. I did. I did think George was going to win. I did too. I really did. That's what. It, that's what his whole purpose is to make you think that he's going to win. But he, he, built, he he's never built, wins. Did, did you think he was going to beat Muda? That, right? uh, I kind of figured that he wasn't because it's Muda. But but here's the thing. George Dude, South's career has changed over the years. Yeah. And now people respect him as the worker he is. He's trained everybody. Ric Flair, when his son, uh, Reed, was getting into professional wrestling, he wanted George to be trained by a re- – or he wanted Reed to be trained by a really good trainer. And he knew that George South was one of the best wrestlers he's ever worked with. And he knew – he wrestled over hundreds of matches against Ric Flair. And he knew that that one guy was going to be able to train his son up. So that, and he, he trained Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's son. Like, all of these, like, major professional wrestlers use yeah. George South to uh, train their children awesome, and, and, and stuff like that. I saw my link. There's a little clip with Muda before the, the match starts. Yeah. Yeah, someone tries to throw the fireball in his face. 
Uh, was it yeah. Eddie Gilbert? It, it, yeah, I think Eddie it was Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert. Yeah. Tries to throw the fireball and, uh, I don't know, mood his face and he pushes someone else in the way. <laughs> but uh, it's just crazy. Zane told us that little story about exchange between uh, George and Muda. Mada! He's known him for forever. Man. Yeah. I guess he's worked with him for a really, really long time. He's worked with everybody. He's such a legend. Yeah. He's amazing. Dude, Mr. Number One, George South, you were the best. Yeah. I know he's never going to listen to this because I don't think Cougar he knows Jay, how to work his phone. You keep telling those scary stories, buddy. <laughs> Doesn't he st- does he still have a flip phone? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, maybe he's upgraded since then, but I, I'm pretty sure that he still has a, a dumb phone. But George South, like, he's, he has trained everybody from Cedric Alexander, Big Swole, uh, Tessa Blanchard. Like, he's trained, like, big names now have been trained by George South that are people that are signed now. So it's... It's cool seeing George South getting the respect due to him now that that he once had. He should have gotten in the 80s. All right. Thank you for listening for the $2 Steak, a pro wrestling podcast. Next week's The Big Week Boys. Oh, yeah. Royal Rumble. We're going to have our Royal Rumble party. And uh, next week for $2 Steak, we are going to split up the 2001 Royal Rumble. Now, the guys got to see a little bit about this beforehand. They got to see Drew Carey. (laughs) They got to see uh, the Honky Talk Man, but we're going to have some fun talking about that Royal Rumble. Thank you for listening to $2 Steak, a pro wrestling podcast, and uh, be sure to to tune in next week for an all-new episode. Don't be ding-dong. It'll be better. We'll all be here next week.